What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. Somebody needs to see it. And don't forget to leave a comment. Also, notifications. Hopefully, YouTube is doing the right thing and you guys get notified. So if you don't have that notification button hit, go ahead and hit it right now. Got a guest on today, man. Spent a lot of time in prison, been through a lot of stuff. I mean, this is one of them dudes that you hear about, man, in, in all these stories. He lived that life. It was a tough life. Almost lost his life. But I'm going to let him talk about it. Tell the people who you are, man. Tell them where you're from, and let's get to it. Hey, man. My name is Donnell. Um, I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, my moniker in prison was Lucky. Uh, been through it, seen it, done it. So let me ask you this, right? How much time did you do? Oh, well, they gave me 10 in Texas. I did a little over nine on it. So you're in the Texas state prison system. Yes, sir. Easy time over there, right? <laughs> yeah, it's club fed, bro. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> and let me ask you this, man. When you were in, were you in prison over there, were you tipped up? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one of the things that happened, you know, being young, white, and, and hitting the prison system. What gang were you in? I was running with the area circle. Patched up? Member? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a member. I'm not patched up. I'm not, well, I was a member. I'm not a member anymore, but no, I, I never got patched up because right about that time is when, uh, if the, if the, if the GI can confirm you, you do your time in the hole. But I've got, I got tattoos that, you know, that throw that representation out there if you really know what you're looking for. But you didn't want them to know. That way you'd end up in the hole and, and be locked in for your whole bit. Right. You know, and it's, it's different. To, it's different down there in Texas. You know, I hear every other place, you know, you got seg with a celly. You don't you don't get a celly down there, you know, and you're doing it's 23 and maybe one, you know. Rough life to live, man. Tell me a little bit about the Aryan Circle. Uh, they were founded in the, the mid-80s, you know, and they got really tired of, you know, other races, just bulldog and shit. And, you know, they had turnkeys back then, I guess. You know, it's way before my time or anything. But, uh, you know, and um, it's not really, you know, a, a racist organization, but we promote, you know, to, you know, stick with our kind and, you know, a lot of the stupid ideologies that you hear about. You ever you ever had to commit violence? You ever have to put in work over there in the, in the Texas state uh, system? <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. What'd you have to do? I'm just curious. Well, you know, just curious. Well, um, there was an issue with the uh, with the, a white dude that uh that came about, and well, let's just say uh he, he left there uh not the easiest way. Did you? you have know, to... He was hard headed though. You ever stab anybody in prison, man? No. No. Ever beat him no. with a lock? Yeah. How about yeah, you? Baby, our locks, are, our, our locks are different. You know, we had the, we had the, it was a plastic case lock. You know, so it really wasn't like the combination locks you, that uh, they give out now. Yeah, you were involved in something in that Texas prison system, and you ended up having to go to the hospital, right? Tell us about it. Well, um, I lost my custody uh, due to a fight, and uh, they, uh, I lost my minimum, went down to medium, and they gave me like forty-five days cell restriction, which is basically said with a celly. They let you out, you know, one hour a day to go to the day room, take showers and this and that. Well, um, there was this uh, AB cat. I don't know if you, I'm sure everybody knows what AB is, but uh, there was this AB cat uh, named Pizza Man, and they called him Pizza Man because uh, when he was 13 years old, he killed a pizza man. They gave him a life sentence and at 13 years old. And, uh, well, now, you know, we're in our mid-20s now. And, uh, well, he was he had, the, he had the tattoo gun now, you know, and he's a real good dude, real solid individual. And so me and his celly would uh, we'd fall out of place overnight, you know, we'd you know, swap cells overnight. And he'd just sit there and just go away like I was a piece of canvas. And, uh, well, I guess one night um, pizza caught his celly off, the, off of his locker, you know, eating all his, his zuzus and wham-whams, and uh, pizza beat the hell out of his celly. Beat, I'm going to beat him bad, bro. And uh, the dude, the dude was a blood, you know, and he was all, you know, swole, swole up and everything. And when uh, they, you know, everywhere we went, we we got escorted, child, you know. And the uh, the police seen uh the police seen the celly, you know, he looked like the elephant man. They pulled him off to the side and 
of course, you know, the, the celly, you know, gave up what happened, you know, and next thing you know, the only thing they could do with them was move them out of cells. Well, it's like three days later, um, we were in our day room for our day room time. And, uh, um, you know, I got my, my, I put my shoes on, I go to the shower shit, you know, and I take my shoes off and I put my, my shower shoes on. I get in the shower and I'm taking the shower. My homeboy was watching point. And, uh, well, this, uh, this crip dude named uh, Breed came around the corner and he's like, lucky man, hit, you need to get to the day room, bro. Get to the day room. I'm like, what's up, Breed? He's like, man, look, if we square off, bro, let's just turn our backs to each other. You know, because he was from my neighborhood, too, in Houston. You know, so we, we didn't know each other, but, you know, we had that, that repertoire of being from the same place and shit. And, well, I guess apparently, um, you know, they were uh, the bloods were wiring that dude up. They got beat up, so, oh, that white boy whooped you, that white boy whooped you. And if you're in about anything, you know, somebody call you a white boy, that's just, you know, that's like, you know, that's disrespectful, bro. You know, that's how they, they see it in Texas. If you're about anything, you know, the, the little featherwoods, they, they don't mind it. But, you know, us us that are about that life, you know, we don't like that white boy shit. Well, I guess Pizza Man went to sit down and uh, go drink his coffee and shit. And that, uh, you know, they were wiring that, that blood up. And as soon as Pizza sat down, that blood come up and snuck Pizza from behind. Well, uh, Pizza's been locked up for like 12 years now, you know, went through TYC, which is Gladiator School. You know, and then when as soon as he had t- turned 18, they sent him off to go, you know, go hit that max time. Well, Pizza Man got up and beat the fuck out this boy. I'm talking about beat the fuck. I mean, three hit or quitter, this dude was done. Well, when he fell, you know, you see the dude call- who was calling shots for the Bloods and, the, you know, had the keys to the car in that wing. He's over there wiring himself up, you know, pumping himself up. He pulls his shirt off and he's like, well, whoop me, white boy. Well, fucking, um, uh, that's about the time I come out the shower and I see Pizza Man and him square off, you know, and, and Pizza Man was cold with his hands, so, and, uh, well, he dropped him. When, when that dude hit the ground, it went off, and, it, and we were outnumbered. It was only me, a homeboy of mine, uh, Pizza Man, and this independent. Well, um, it went off, you know, and next thing you know, I'm getting, I got my arms pinned to my side. I'm being laid, laid on somebody's back, and they stood up. And the small of my back was on the shoulder. Somebody grabbed me by my throat, and they just fell backwards and split my shit open. You know, wound up, uh, wound up going to the, you know, they, that's when the gas hit the wing, and you know, everybody was down. People were, you know, crying for the mama when they gas hits and shit. But um, you know, so I uh, wind up we uh we all go down to medical, and medical is like, oh, it's okay. Here's a couple of Tylenol. Go back to the wing. Well, they they basically carried me to medical. They carried me back. You know, handcuffed unhandcuffed me, put me in a cell. And uh, later on, I went to get up to go take a take a piss at the toilet. And when I got up, I just lost everything but face first. And I, when they were doing when they were doing counts or whatever, they seen me face first on the fucking on the pavement, dude. You know, they, they called in that they called it. They took me back to medical, called in an ambulance. And when the ambulance got there, the lady, with, you know, did the little pin light in the eyes thing and said, this, he's not going to make it too much longer. You know, they called in a helicopter, it landed next door at the little makeshift airport they had. They life flighted me to uh, BYU in San Antonio, Texas. And I spent six days in ICU with a tube in my head, draining all the blood off my brain. And Damn, man. Blood on your brain, man. Do you yeah. re- it's do you re- real, man. It's real. Did, were you laying in the hospital thinking like this is it, man? I'm about to die, man. Yeah, well, you know, my mom was uh, she was real sick and she was battling cancer at that time, and uh, you know, and this happened the the 28th of uh, October, you know, of 2001. Um, after everything uh, happened on the on the unit, you know, I guess I, I was in the hospital. The the major there called my mom and said, well, your son, he was in a gang related race riot tonight. He might not make it, you know, and I'm sure you know, I'm sure that didn't make my mama feel too good getting that call at fucking two o'clock in the morning, you know. And uh, well, the only thing I could think about, is, you know, how's my mom? You know, how's she feeling? And, you know, and I wanted to make a phone call and they never would let me make a phone call. And, you know, and I thought. I guess one of the lady nurses, you know, she felt bad for me or whatever, you know, and she said, you know, medical out rural security, they made them get out the, they made them get out the room and uh, the lady uh, whipped out her little cell phone and called my mom for me. And I talked to my mom for a second and she was in tears and just, you know, worried about me coming home. And, uh, well, so they wind up closing me out. They took like two years, good time, wind up closing me out with the closed custody, which is said with a celly, you know, and uh, 
it was December 25th of 2001. Uh, we're on the wreck yard, and, and you know they wreck you, in, you know, six people at a time in cages. And um, well, we had this one officer that was really this one cop. She was really cool, you know, and she come through the door, and you know, usually she calls me by my by my moniker, but she come through the door. And she's like, uh, uh, Pitt. I'm like, what's up? She says, cuff up. So, you know, I cuff up and uh, they take me down to the chaplain's office and uh, the, the, uh, they take me to the sergeant's office first. And they were like, uh, what's your what's your TDC number? I gave them my number. And they're like, oh, no, you're not supposed to be here. You need to go to the chaplain's office. And my heart sunk when that happened, bro. When I got to the chaplain's office on Christmas Day, they said, you know, well, your mom passed. You got five minutes on the phone. Wow. Your mom died on Christmas, huh? Christmas Day, 2001, bro. While I was in prison, while everything that uh, she ever told me came true, she told me before you know, before I got locked up, she told me if I, you don't stop doing what you're doing, you know, you're gonna wind up in prison, and I'm not gonna be here when you get out, when you get out, you know. Damn, must be a hard pill to swallow, bro. I can't even imagine. Man, dude, I was I was a nutcase for a while again and, and this old uh this old muslim dude he's like hey man you can uh you can do your time two ways from here you know he said you can just buck the system and wind up an ad seg or you can you know find some positivity and, and, and work on that you know and but i was in close custody so there's not a lot i could do anyway you know and uh well the the my supposed bros you know at the time you know, they I couldn't go to like their little meetings or anything because I was in close custody and shit. They were like, Well, as soon as you come out of as soon as you come out of the uh, closed custody and get back to medium, you know, we have our meetings on Saturdays at the at the chap at the chapel, you know, it's a like, uh, Catholic church. So as soon as I got out of um, closed custody, I went down there for the first meeting. They were like, Yeah, we we heard about what happened over here and uh, uh we want to violate you. And I'm like, violate me for what? They're like, Well, you got out there for A B. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, I didn't get out there for A.B. I got out there for a white dude who was fighting for his fucking self. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, I got out there for, you know, what is this, what is this shit about? You know, we're supposed to be uplifting ours, but when we protect ours, you want to, you want to get mad at me because, because um, um, I got out there for him. I said, you can have this patch, you know, do what you want to do. I lay it down. And uh, they were like, all right, well, you know, it's blood in, blood out. I'm like, it's whatever, right? Well, um, well, anyway, sorry, my coworker popped in. Um, but anyway, so, um, you know, I told my celly, I said, hey, man, they might come to the house, dude. They might come to the house, you know, if somebody, if two people, you know, a couple people come in the house, you know, it, it, you know, just leave, bro. Let, let it happen. Whatever happens, happens. And he was like, man, fuck that. Fuck that, man. I, I fuck with you. I'm like, man, just, just, you don't want to get involved, bro. You know, it'll start some shit that, you know, if you jump, it's going to be a whole lot of drama. You know, just let whatever happens, happens. I mean, they're just not going to run in here and just do what they want to do, you know? Well, I don't know. It's probably like two weeks later. We were in the the chow halls on the Darrington unit. Rochester and Texas are huge, bro. It's like two football fields beside each other, you know. And uh, and I, I'm looking back behind me, and I see the two little prospects coming. And uh, and I told my celly, I said, "Watch out, bro. They're they're coming now." And you could see them. They wasn't even trying to be sneaky about. It. They were creeping through the lines, and you know, trying to get up there to me. Well, as soon as I got up, like two people behind me, I hopped the rail right there. I hopped the the, the little divider rail right there. And when the first one come over, I grabbed the pitcher off the off the table, you know, and hit him with the, the bottom side of that pitcher and split his shit. And when uh, his shit got split, uh, his little the little buddy that was with him dropped his little banger. And when he did, my celly kicked that bitch across the chow hall. Across the child hall floor, you know, and I just grabbed a hold of one and just put the working on him. So that was that the end of your career or what? Well, that was the end of me fucking with AC. And what happened you know. though? When when you stopped, I mean, did they transfer you? Were you in danger? I mean, no. Well, I went to I went to the hole. I went to the hole uh, for like nine days, and finally they, you know, they brought me out. And you know, work travels fast there, you know. And I don't know, the major there was like, you know, we heard about what happened. We're not even going to put a shot on you. Um, but uh, do you want to stay here? I'm like, yeah, I want to stay here. Like, well, it's sort of like a bad man's work, you know. Fucking, I had to sign a little paper saying I'll be all right. And that was the end of it? They didn't try to get you again? They just let you ride? Nah, because, I mean, they, 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 man, bro, they talk tough. You know, they talked a lot of tough. But, you know, really, when it come down to fucking shit going off, bro, <laughs> I've been around some AC dudes, man, when I was in federal prison. I was I was in Big Sandy with Bones and 
Uh, AC, I know AC Chuck. I mean, some of them dudes, man, are tough dudes, man. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, the people that I got down with, you know, they were they were about that life, you know. But that was what, when we was up in, like, a max facility, you know. that you know that I think it's just a whole different cut when it comes down there. You know, they really don't want to get in trouble, you know, and fucking. So they let you ride. So after that. I mean, how was your how was your bid there? Were you a little nervous? Were you watching every day? Yeah, but I, you know, I always watched. You know, and, um, well, I was always like that to begin with. You know, yeah. I didn't, don't, don't like people standing behind me. Don't you know? And I'm still I'm still like that today. You know, I don't like people behind me. I don't like being in crowds. Um, you know, you catch me. You know, solo dolo. But now, yeah, I'll tell you this. I'm the same way. I go to a restaurant. I want my back to the wall. My wife sits on the other side. It's just. Just something that happens to you in there mentally and emotionally, man. You know what I mean? Oh, bro, fuck. It might, you know, I'm up. I'm up. You know, it seems like even, you know, this was 15 years ago, 16 years ago. You know, and still to this day, I'm up by 6 o'clock, you know, feet on the floor by 6 o'clock, you know. How long, How so you end up leaving Texas and you go to a different state. You go to prison over there too, or? Yeah, I went to. I moved to Washington State. You know, uh, right before I was uh, scheduled to get out in Texas, I have a sister who grew up up here in Washington State. She was like, "Hey, man, don't go back to Cloverleaf. Um, you know, there's nothing there for you. You're gonna wind up back in trouble. You know, come up to Washington State. You know, so I come up to Washington State, and you know, and I still didn't have. You know, I, I was hard headed. You know what I mean? I was still hard headed, and I wound up catching the. Uh, I wound up catching 22 months in Washington State for the same two charges I got in Texas. You know, so when they come at me with 22 months, I took it. You know, and when uh, I got here, dude, this when I got to this prison system up here, it's nothing like Texas. The, I mean, the politics wasn't there. I mean, it's predominantly white. Um, it was crazy. It was a, it was like a whole. I mean, they had they had phones. They had, you could have a TV. Um, it was crazy, dude. I was like, how the fuck? I mean, to get a phone call in Texas, you had to put in an I-60, wait 90 days, and don't have no infractions, you know, to, just to make a five-minute collect phone call. Now I hear, you know, up here in Washington State, they had phones, like eight phones on the wall. <laughs> a whole different prison system. They treated you a little more humane, I guess, huh? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot more humane. When did you end up getting out of prison, man? What year? When? In Texas? Well, I mean, when you were completely done with prison, how long have you been free? That's a better question. I've been uh, I've been free almost seven years. Almost seven years. Didn't violate. No new crimes. Living your no life. No new violations. No nothing. Living my best life. Um, you know, as you can see, I'm at work right now. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm in the main in our, in our parts room right now doing this interview with you. But yeah, just trying to, just trying to. I got kids now, so you know things are different for me. And I you see know? you got a, uh, I see you got a wedding ring on too, man. You married? Oh yeah, yeah yeah, yeah you yeah. Think, I got a wife. Do you think that helped you calm down when you ended up with a woman? And you said, man, this is this is her or what? No. You didn't calm down after that. Well, no, I calmed down. I got calmed down when after I had my daughter. Dude. All right, but yeah. you said you're living your best life. Tell me why it's your best life. Is it just because you're free? Man, I can go wherever the hell I want to go. Dude. You know, I can go. I can go and get something out of the soda machine. I can go down to the store. I can go fishing. I can. I can just do whatever I want to do. You know, I don't have to answer to nobody. I don't, nobody tells me where I eat at. Nobody tells me what I eat. Um, life is great, dude. When you stop doing that bullshit. <laughs> hey, I understand, man. I respect it, man. Especially for a guy like you, you almost lost your life. They had to mercy flight you. They had to put you on a helicopter, man. Yeah. If that don't wake you up, what will, right? Yeah, and uh, it's sad that really didn't wake me up then, you know, but I'm one of the people that uh, if, if, I have no, if I have got everything going out, nothing coming in, I start to get stressed. You know what I mean? I got to have, I, I need money. I got to live, you know, and that's what happened with this little bullshit stand I did up here in Washington State, you know. Everything was going out, nothing was coming in, so I figured I'd jump back in and make some quick money real quick, though. I got my mind right, or, you know, got, got my finances right, and it didn't take long. I had a lot of fucking tattletales up here, and, you know, I wound up catching some more time. But like you said, man, you're free, and you're living your best life. Yes, sir. So let me ask you this, man. 
when you left that Texas, when you when you when the whole gang thing ended, man, were you a little bit disappointed? Like these guys weren't the people that you thought they were. When I mean, they, highly they were, disappointed, highly disappointed. You know, and and they really they were really focused on that uh, pizza was an AB, and we just got out of a, a major war with AB in the, in the Texas prison system. It was an SOS for a, a while, and you know it came down. There's a treaty, and you know and and I didn't see pizza. I didn't see pizza as AB. I didn't see pizza as you know. I seen pizza was a dude out there fighting for his motherfucking self, you know. And I'm not gonna. Lie. I don't care who you are, you know. I don't care who you are. If you're fighting for yourself, dude, especially in that Texas prison system where it's, you know you're already outnumbered, the whites are way outnumbered, and you're fighting for yourself. I'm gonna get out there with you. I don't care who you are. Well, that's that. That's the other thing I wanted to ask you because Texas seems like a very racially segregated prison system and. You know, in the feds, it's pretty racially segregated when you're in a USP in a maximum security prison. So if a white dude in prison, right, in, in federal prison, something happens like that, and you, I don't care what gang he's in, if you don't help him, they're smashing you. And it wasn't working yeah. like that in Texas? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> pretty much. It's supposed to be like that. But they were so they were so hung up that he was AB. It was un- unbelievable, you know. But... Yeah, well, you know, the when I when I say about that that riot that happened where I took that life flight, uh, one of my own bros, you know, that was in the wing with me, he was hiding in the black shower when all that shit kicked off, you know, and he left me out there high and dry by myself, you know. Well, you know, I had an independent name. His name's uh, Clint, dude. If, uh, Clint, if you see this man, please reach out to Chad. Chad will reach out to me. Um, solid ass dude. Um, I don't know what's up with the pizza man. I, you know, I know he's still locked up. He got life. Sad, man. He was 13 years old and got life. Yeah. You know, and Donnell. He got life. I want, I want to go back to this part, too, because I don't want, you know, people to think. The same way in the feds, man. If you're black and some white dude jumps on you, other black dudes are going to help. And if they don't, bad things are going to happen. Same thing with Mexicans. And really, in the penitentiary, when I was serving time, we pretty much had a understanding where it was a hands-off policy, man. You know, if there was an issue... You know, shot callers would talk about it, figure out what's going on. I mean, sometimes things did pop off. Sometimes things happen. But a lot of times, man, you would politic, right? There'd be a lot of politics in the feds to stop yeah. that stuff from happening. And I just think it's mind-boggling that these dudes are supposed to be your brothers. And, you know, when you're in a gang, man, there's this, you know, people think there's this bond. And sometimes you do. You bond with some of the homeboys. And some of them you don't. Some of them you're like, man, for real, man, I really don't even like this dude. And you're in the same gang as this cat. You ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, question his morality or something, you know, question where, where his heart's really at. You know, you, you chop all this up with us, but, you know, on, on the sidelines, you're doing something else, you know. It's... Yeah, and, I, and, and, you know, sometimes, like I said, dude, you just almost lost your life, man, and, these, and now these dudes want to jump on you too? And you it think, sucks, bro. you're like, damn, these are my brothers, man. These are the dudes I'm supposed to be able to count on. And here they are, man. They turn their back on me. I've seen it, man. Yeah, seen but, it a thousand times. Yeah, I've, yeah. It happens, dude. You know, and I was watching. Uh, I was watching one of your uh, one of your shows where uh, that Cedric Dean cat, where he said, you know, ninety percent of uh, Crips kill Crips. Ninety percent of Bloods, you know, assault Bloods. Not since the Aryan Brotherhood, they assault their own. You know, and it's like that, dude. It's so fucked up, like that, dude. You know, the ones you expect that you can count on the most are the first person to give you their ass to kiss. Yeah, ain't that something. That's pretty deep, man. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. So listen, you know, you said you calmed down. How many kids you got, man? I got three. Three kids. They look up to you now, don't they? Yeah. yeah. And, you're, and you're the father that they can be proud of. They say, man, that's my dad, man. My dad goes to work. My dad's not in the streets. I don't have to worry about my dad leaving me and going to prison. He's going to be here. How's that feel, man, yeah. at night? It feels great, man. I was an hour late getting to work because my uh my my fourteen year old had a had a football game today. So you know I was, I'm gonna stand behind that football game with him and uh you know and not uh not uh you know I'm gonna be there for him. Yeah. Well, listen, man. Before we close the show, man, is there anything you want to say? Um, children, young people, boys, girls. If you think it's a joke out here running these damn streets, they got a place for you. They got a place for you, and it's not a nice place. 
you know, don't listen to the hype, you know, oh, you'll be all right, this and that, because things happen with everybody. I don't care what color you are, what race you are, what, what religion you are, things happen, and it's not all good. You know, you might have your, you know, a couple of moments to where things are peaceful and, and things are going smooth, but at the drop of a dime, it could go sideways. 100%, man. Listen, I know you got to get back to work. I'm going to close the show, let people know, man, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your story, man. I appreciate you being a father, being a real father, a real leader, man. I mean that. So we're going to close, man, with respect. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Change your life so you don't end up mercy flighted, man, for real. Until tomorrow, we're out.